Nathan Brown of Big 12 Mafia, Greg Flugar mentioned almost in passing about Kansas going to the SEC. Now, Flugar is the same guy that was very early on USC moving to the Big 10. The same guy who told us Colorado was coming back to the Big 12. He has got sources across the country. He did not guarantee that Kansas will move to the Southeastern Conference, but it's at least on the table. I don't think that's going to happen. What say you? Well, I'm going to go back a little bit in time. So uh, we've been covering college football for the last year on my channels, right? Uh, Big 12 Mafia and College Football Mafia Network. We're covering all this stuff. And Kansas has come up in conversations similar Mm -hmm. like uh, Texas A&M to the Big Ten type of conversations. If you think about it logistically, you have these regions that these big two conferences are caught up in, and there are natural affiliations that could bring in a team like that. So imagine Missouri now has a Kansas across the border. It's very easy to do those cross-border battles and to promote and bring things in. The other part of it is we now find out that basketball is going to be a big moneymaker moving forward, and Sankey's no dummy. So anytime they can bring in additional monies based on uh, participation of any school, let alone Kansas, the number one basketball brand in all college football, uh, college basketball. Why wouldn't you do it? Uh, the only question is going to be, is there enough money in the kitty mm-hmm. to pay for it? I don't think there is. Uh, uh, for Kansas to go in, it would really, really have to be maybe at a third of a, of a share, wow. maybe a half of a, uh, at a share. Now for Kansas, you'd take that decision in a heartbeat because about as much as they're getting the big 12 you know right Uh, well (laughs) but and then the payoff changes in five or six years Mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden you're getting a hundred million dollars a year right so from kansas standpoint they would do that in a heartbeat the only question is is there enough revenue is there enough justification Mm -hmm. from a money perspective to prove that kansas or for that matter any other school in the big 12 moving to a big 10 or the sec has the value it brings the eyeballs and there aren't a lot of brands that will do it There's not a lot in the Big 12 or the ACC outside of Miami. uh, You have Florida State and Clemson. If you look at the numbers, Louisville is the only other one that's close. Mm -hmm. So Kansas to go there, of course they could. If they want to have them in there, the SEC will write a check and bring them in. But is it imminent? I don't think Greg said it was imminent. I think Greg said that he's hearing that people are talking to people at Kansas, you know, not again, boosters, they can't tamper, but they're having these conversations. Is it logical? Sure. You can see that in the coming years, but in the next two, three years, I just don't think the money's there. Nathan, it almost goes against everything that I've preached for the last year about how football pushes the needle and is the moneymaker. It's still that that's still true. That, it that is. quote is, still true what changed why basketball why now why is that a hot commodity especially as we saw the acc try to become that basketball conference and fall flat on its face well, let's talk about the big thing, the elephant in the room that nobody wants to put a dollar amount on, and that's brand value. Mm-hmm. Look, Oregon by themselves without Nike, it, the brand is – they're like uh, – I don't even want to throw a school out. I mean, Washington Oregon State. State. They're, yeah. not any, yeah. they're not right. any better than Oregon State is without, without Nike. Yep. Uh, and now that endowment is built, uh, Phil Knight put the money in, has built that athletic endowment. Now Oregon will never be short of money for athletics. Yep. But – That is what we're looking at is brand value. Right now, the brands that you have in the ACC uh, that could carry the day, that would be uh, Miami, Clemson, and Florida State. And probably you could put North Carolina in there. Uh, Louisville is a great fit. But, But Kansas itself, it's that brand. You could put Kansas, the little Jayhawk, you put the KU on a hat. Everybody knows what it is. Just like everybody knows the Duke one, everybody knows North Carolina, and that has a lot of value. Uh, Bob Thompson in his in – his, uh, what is it? Fabulous five, if you want to call him that. All rules of realignment. Brand is number one or two on every time he's done a list. So mm-hmm. if Bob Thompson says it, I believe it. As Kansas – if, if football is not there, and we, I, I've made the case a couple of times that there are schools that are looking to get in the SEC that it might be the end of your football program. I mean, that's a Kansas right. going to the SEC going four and eight. You're asking you to, you're, to go four and eight to make a lot more money. Betting on yourself doesn't always work here. We've seen that with a couple of expansion partners. Even Texas A&M thought, look, we can go to the SEC and compete in football, and they haven't done it yet. And their resources are obviously tenfold above what Kansas has on the gridiron. Would that athletic department, 
in Lawrence be making an incorrect move by betting on itself and moving to the SEC, especially when football is the long-term plan? What is your long-term goal if you're running a business? You have to set a marker, I want to make money. I want to make money. Money or do you want to be competitive? Because except for the NFL, no other league in the world has the competitive balance like the NFL Mm -hmm. does. And college football certainly does not. So at the organizational level at KU, are they okay going four and eight, maybe a good year, seven and five, but they're cashing a check for $100 million? The boosters? They have some choice in that, but that's an academic discussion. That's a that's a discussion you have to have with your chancellor and your board of trustees and board of governors. Every school has to answer that differently. Unfortunately, everybody that's in the Big 12 and the SEC is set. They got their golden ticket. And at least for now, that's not being pulled anytime soon. Uh, maybe in the future that changes. I'm not seeing it on a horizon anywhere. Yeah. But Kansas – they could look at it and say, look, we're building a stadium. We're doing what we can to improve our mm-hmm. facilities. But is Kansas ever going to be a juggernaut in football in the SEC or the Big Ten? I don't think so. Probably so, not. That's where it comes down to. By the way, when the news about Kansas came out from Greg, there was this thought that, wow, there would be this hue and cry. Everybody would be complaining, oh, no, another school is leaving the Big 12 to go to a big mm-hmm. conference to play football. You didn't hear that. In fact, no. KSU didn't really say anything about it. It's kind of like, oh, okay, well, whatever. I mean, is it a basketball brand? Yes, but you've already said it. Football drives realignment. So right. losing Kansas in the Big 12, I'm sure they're thinking, you know, Oregon State. Yeah. No, Louisville. Washington State, Louisville, if they yeah. Bring yeah. In, uh, I don't think that's an even trade. In fact, Louisville brand for brand is actually worth more than Kansas. Not the mm-hmm. brand value, but the, the the football and basketball programs. Yeah, from a revenue standpoint, especially even the yeah. United States government, the EADA numbers show that Louisville's far ahead of it most is. Big yeah. 12 schools and even a couple of ACC schools, ACC juggernauts over the last yes. two decades. Um, Nathan, I just, I, I agree. It was a collective scoff. When Kansas, when there was like, oh, Kansas SEC, you're a Kansas State fan. It's like, oh, uh, whatever. And then right. Missouri fans were the ones who are pushing back on it so much because they would hate to see who they consider little brother to get into the conference. Oh, sure. Yeah. Basketball wise, for sure. Uh, Nathan, it, it brings up the question to me. Does this does this this murmur mean that Brett Yormark will at some point have to play the defensive to keep teams in the league again? Let's go there next on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by the reason that I'm a fierce competitor, and that is Monopoly Go. I played the traditional Monopoly. I still play the traditional Monopoly, but now I can do it on the go in my car, not while I'm driving via the app from the App Store or Google Play. Game on. We got to pause here to talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that yesterday, but you can team up with friends right now for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, like unique stickers you can trade with friends to compete for albums for big prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with as well. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day. Constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure and a Robot Pachinko Machine. There's always new time events to help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win, rent, or frenzies. There's something always to discover at Monopoly Go. Set off the bench. Go download it now for free, actually, on Google Play and the App Store. Game on. Monopoly Go.